during the Cold War, the two German states, the Federal Republic of Germany in the West and the German Democratic Republic in the East, stood as two foot soldiers of NATO and the Warsaw Pact on the forefront of the Iron Curtain. Being certainly located on a major battlefield of a new all-out European war, both German states were considerably remilitarized when they were allowed to have their own armed forces from the 1950s onward. As such, the East German army received a total of around 1,133 BMP1s from 1968 when two training vehicles were received to 1988, including a number of BVP1s produced in neighboring Czechoslovakia. Outside of a mere 24 BMP2s, the BMP1 was the sole infantry fighting vehicle in service there. With the peaceful conclusion of the Cold War though, these BMP1s would never be consumed in great battles on the German plains. Instead, the East German BMP1 fleet was inherited by the West German Bundeswehr, which now had to ponder what to do with this large fleet of infantry fighting vehicles vastly different from its own martyrs. Hello and welcome to another Tank Encyclopedia voiced article. I'm your host, Tony, and today I'll be covering the BMP-1A1 Ost. The upgrade program and use of the BMP-1 after the German reunification. If you like our videos and want to support us, please consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be used to improve Feature Tank Encyclopedia content. Any help would be greatly appreciated. When first pushed into service in the late 1960s, the BMP-1 was a major addition to the Soviet Red Army's arsenal, and despite the existence of some previous vehicles such as the West German HS-30, it is often considered to be the first truly modern infantry fighting vehicle IFV to be adopted in massive numbers, at least was for the Eastern Bloc. The vehicle could be used to support armored assault in all types of terrains thanks to its amphibious capacities and was able to carry a section of infantry even in heavily contaminated terrain which would typically be expected after the use of NBC, nuclear, biological, and chemical weapons. Support for accompanying tank as well as dismounted infantry would be provided by a 73mm Grom infantry support gun and a Malyutka missile launcher with four missiles stored in the vehicle for use against armored vehicles. In East Germany, the BMP-1 was the only infantry fighting vehicle available in large numbers. Only 24 examples of its successor, the BMP-2, were ever delivered. The NVA also received 9 BRM-1K recon vehicles and 2 BREM-CH armored recovery vehicle. In the last days of the NVA, the BMP-1 outfitted 6 motorized rifle regiments, the 3rd, 7th, 9th, 16th, 23rd, and 27th. Although it appears a total of 1,133 BMP-1s had been delivered to the NVA, a few had been phased out during the 1980s due to wear and tear, and as such, 1,112 were available. This total included both some baseline BMP-1s and a considerable number of vehicles which had gone through the BMP-1P upgrade, which replaced the Malyutka missile with a more modern Concours a new fire extinction system to counter napalm, and an array of six Tucha 81mm smoke grenades located on the rear roof of the turret. In East German service, the vehicles were known as the Sushen Panzer BMP-1. After years of crisis and decline, tensions within East Germany exploded in 1989. First, citizens tried to leave or apply for visas, notably using Hungary to try and cross into neutral Austria and from there into the democratic West Germany. With the opening of the border between the two starting in August 1989, tens of thousands of East Germans moved into Austria and later West Germany going through Hungary, seeking reunion with family and or better opportunities in a more prosperous economy. Things escalated further in November with massive protests in East German cities while the opening of the West German Czechoslovak border created yet another even more easily accessible entry into West Germany for East Germans. By the 9th of November, travel restrictions between the two Germanys were lifted. The once impenetrable Berlin Wall started to be taken down. In March 1990, in the last elections of East Germany, a branch of the Christian Democratic Union CDU, which supported quick reunification was appointed with the following last few months of East Germany's existence being focused on quickly integrating East Germany into the Federal Republic. 
On 3rd October 1990, the five states of East Germany as well as East Berlin were formally integrated into the Federal Republic. The DDR and its armed branch, the NVA, were no more. The large quantities of equipment left behind by the NVA were taken over by the Material Depot Service Gesellschaft, Material Service Depot Company, MDSG, to be warehoused and maintained. In December of 1990, it was decided the BMP-1 was one of the pieces of equipment of the former NVA that would, for a time, be operated by the Bundeswehr. Some 764 vehicles were to be pressed back into service. The BMP-1 were to outfit six units which were created in April of 1991 from reforming six East German divisions, two armored and four motorized rifle divisions. These became Heimatschutzbrigade or Homeland Security Brigade, 37th, 38th, 39th, 40th, 41st, and 42nd. Heimatschutzbrigade 37th and 41st were the ones formed from former NVA tank divisions and also included T-72 tanks, while the other four were the ones formed from motorized rifle divisions. When inspecting and evaluating the BMP-1, it was found that the vehicle did not meet many of the standards expected of armored fighting vehicles of the Bundeswehr, more so in ergonomic qualities than in combat elements. The vehicle's front and rear lights were not up to the standards of West German vehicles. The lack of wing mirrors were noted. More worryingly, a number of elements which were not up to West German safety or health standards were found in the BMP-1. The fuel tanks embedded in the rear doors were thought to be a hazard. As the vast majority of operators of the type, the Bundeswehr found the interior cramped. Firing the 73mm Grumps ammunition was found to release potentially toxic nitroglycerin, while the coaxial 7.62mm PKT would potentially release mercury. Toxic asbestos was also present in the brake bands, clutch lining, and gaskets. If the BMP-1 was to remain in Bundeswehr service, these issues had to be fixed. The upgrades were designed by SIVG, System Repair and Recovery Company, and FUG, Fahrzeug und Umwelttechnik Gesellschaft MBH, Vehicle and Environment Technology Company. It appears that the former was a formerly East German maintenance facility, while the latter was a facility located in the West. The first three vehicles were converted as prototypes at Reparaturwerk New Brandenburg or New Brandenburg Repair Workshop, which was the main maintenance facility for BMP-1s in East Germany. These first three conversions happened from January to March 1991. After they proved satisfactory, the upgrade was standardized as the BMP-1A1 Ost East. A further 100 vehicles were converted in New Brandenburg from May to September of 1991 and another 399 at the same facility from October of 1991 to January of 1993. A further 83 vehicles were modernized by the SIZ-890 repair base located at Doberluk, another town of the Brandenburg province. The vehicles which were selected to be upgraded were the BMP-1 in the best conditions, which usually were the BMP-1Ps. Many of the additions brought by the Ost upgrade aim at making the BMP-1 compliant with West German road regulations and follow the same standard as West German vehicles. This translated in the vehicle's headlights being replaced by some identical to those on the Martyr 1A3. In front of those headlights, small orange identification lights were placed. The same horn as on the Martyr was also installed. Externally visible changes including a pair of wing mirrors located behind the headlights. This could be retracted with the glass facing against the hull. At the rear, rear lights were added to ease convoy driving. If for one reason or another, the lights had to be turned off, a light cross, writing cross was added on the rear left door. This was a green rubber sheet on which a white cross was painted. A small 24-fold lamp was installed at the center of this cross to illuminate it at night, allowing the next vehicle to follow when driving in convoys at night. The Ost upgrade also included a short metal ladder on the rear of the left fender in order to ease climbing into or descending from the vehicle. It has often been claimed the vehicle received a set of West German smoke grenades. However, this does not appear to be the case. PMP-1A1 vehicles either do not feature smoke grenades or feature them in the exact same arrangement as a standard PMP-1P. It appears that, for those vehicles, the original Tucha 81mm smoke grenades were retained. 
The old upgraded vehicles were purged of all asbestos, of which the use is entirely banned in Germany. Much more significantly for the capacities of the vehicle, the fifth gear, the last of the gearbox, was locked on the vehicle, which reduced its maximum speed to 40 km per hour, likely in a bid to ease maintenance and reduce wear and tear on the vehicle. The clutch was optimized to allow for a smooth start of the vehicle, and the braking system was modified so that a handbrake was present for both tracks. The upgrade added a heater to keep the crew comfortable in winter conditions. At last, the fuel tanks present in the rear doors were removed and prevented from being filled. It is sometimes reported the fuel tanks were instead filled with styrofoam. On the inside of the vehicles, efforts were made to make the BMP-1 more comfortable. This was manifested in the addition of a heater as well as elements such as covers protecting the edges of the observation devices used by the dismounts in order to prevent head injuries. An anti-slip coating was also added on a number of points on the exterior of the vehicle's hull. The BMP-1A1 remained a moderate upgrade in scope, intended only to make the BMP-1 conform to German regulations. Many issues of the vehicle could never be fixed, and in several ways, the BMP-1A1 was inferior to even a baseline BMP-1 when looked solely through the lens of combat capacities. The most pressing issue likely was the armament not being up to Bundeswehr regulations. This was never fixed, though it appears that some thought was given into researching 73mm ammunition that would not eject nitrocellulose. This was never truly pursued. As a consequence, regulations prohibited the use of armament on the BMP-1A1 Oast in peacetime. Furthermore, the Oast upgrade also removed the missile launcher and guidance equipment made before the Malyutka or the Gonkurs. Additionally, while some efforts were made to make the inside more ergonomic, these were only details and limited volume of the BMP-1's infantry compartment was something that was not fixable without a deep transformation of the vehicle the Bundeswehr was not willing to perform. The BMP-1A1 O's were delivered to the Heimatschutzbrigades from late 1991 to early 1993. They were operated in a transitional period for the Bundeswehr, which was incorporating the former NVA within its rank. The BMP-1A1 O's was, as such, largely meant as a training vehicle as well as a way for the Bundeswehr to keep the last generation of NVA conscripts in operations with vehicles, without having to retrain them for vastly different West German APCs or IFEs. The units which operated the BMP-1A1 often had a very mixed kit. The dismounts of the vehicles were typically observed using West German MG3 machine gun, but the East German MPI AK-74 rifle. Similarly, their base uniform is the West German one, but they retain some pieces of East German kit. Interestingly enough, the new Brandenburg repair plant even went through the hassle of creating a driver's training BMP-1A1 Oast by mounting the cabin of a FAP-500U, an East German driver's training vehicle based on the ZSU-57-2, in place of the turret of a BMP. Considering the BMP-1A1 Oast role as a training vehicle as well as a way to maintain East German conscripts in operation for the duration of their service, it is not surprising the vehicle did not remain in service with the Bundeswehr for long. While some may imagine the reunification of Germany would have met a larger German army, this was more than offset by the reduction in world tension that followed the end of the Cold War and the following massive reduction in military budget and sizes. The already existing Marder 1 fleet was largely sufficient for German needs, and in the last 1A3 variant offer a considerably more capable vehicle in comparison to BMP-1. The BMP-1A1 O's were therefore phased out of service in 1993-1994. However, this does not mean that they would be scrapped or placed into museums. While Germany had no interest in large number of surplus IFEs, some other European countries did. For nations which did not have IFEs, or if so, only in small numbers, a large number of very cheap off-the-shelf vehicles was a very attractive offer. Three European countries ended up purchasing ex-East German BMP-1s. Greece bought the bulk of the BMP-1A1 Oost fleet, purchasing one vehicle for trials in 1992 and a batch of 500 ex-Bundeswehr vehicle in 1994, at a low price of just 50,000 Deutschmark each. Greece also bought the sole BMP-1A1 driver's training vehicle that had been converted. 
This would become the only infantry fighting vehicles in Greek service as the Hellenic army retired its small fleet of AMX-10Ps at the conclusion of the Cold War. The Greeks further modified their BMP-1 by adding an M2 Browning 50 cal machine gun on top of the turret. The vehicle was widely used by Greek mechanized troops, though the fleet has dwindled due to vehicles being sold to Iraq or more recently, Egypt, or being used as targets in military exercises. The BMP-3 was considered and even ordered from Russia as a replacement, but the contract was cancelled when the 2008 economic crisis ravaged the Greek economy. From 2014 onward, a portion of the remaining Greek BMP-1A1 fleet was modified, replacing the turret with a ZU-23 dual 23mm anti-aircraft gun. Around 100 BMP-1A1Os, including these conversions, remain in service on the Greek islands of Samos, Chios, Kos, and Lesbos. All of the remaining BMP-1A1Os, save for the few which have remained in Germany, were sold to Sweden as part of a sale of 431 BMP-1s, the other being 290 baseline BMP-1 and 60 BMP-1P. The Swedes ran 350 of their BMP-1s through a series of upgrades performed in the Czech Republic, and with similar goals to the German Ost upgrade. These were designated PBV-501. The others were kept as spare parts donor. The PPV-501 were delivered from 1996 to 2001. It was decided to phase them out in 2000, and most of the vehicles were delivered straight into storage. They were eventually sold back to the Czech company which upgraded them in 2008, which proceeded to sell most of them to Iraq from 2015 onward, something Swedish legislation would not have allowed. Finland was another buyer of former East German BMP-1s but did not purchase a single Ost vehicle. Already a user of the BMP-1 prior to the end of the Cold War, Finland purchased 140 German BMPs in 1993 to 1994 and ran them through their own locally developed upgrades. Through both Greece which transferred 100 BMP-1A1Os to the new Iraqi army in 2005 and 2006 and Czech company Excalibur which delivered a considerable number of PPV-501, perhaps up to 250, through Bulgaria from 2015 onward, Iraq acquired a considerable number of ex-German BMP-1s. These served alongside surviving vehicles from the Hussein regime, as well as BMP-1s delivered from other sources, such as Ukraine. The type has been widely engaged in the conflicts which have ravaged Iraq since. The PPV-501 notably, being delivered from 2015 onward, were heavily engaged in the counter-offensive against ISIS, aiming at taking back Mosul. In the 2014 and 2017 period, out of 85 destroyed Iraqi BMP-1s, 35 were identified to be PPV-501. At least one BMP-1A1 Ost has survived in Germany. It is present at the Munster Tank Museum by the side of an unupgraded NVA BMP-1 and the sole NVA BMP-2 to have remained in Germany. A BMP-1A1 Ost has appeared in demonstrations in Germany, though it is unclear if it is the same vehicle. The BMP-1A1 Ost was an attempt at making a dated piece of Eastern Bloc equipment compatible with Western standards of operation. The upgrade did not attempt to improve the combat capacities of the BMP-1 in any meaningful way but instead concentrated on ergonomic elements and potential risk encountered when operating the vehicle. So the surface of the vehicle was very short in Germany, through its export surface, it would see four new users in the shape of Sweden, Greece, Egypt, and Iraq. The Ost vehicles were significantly modified further for Sweden and by Greece, and through the eventual sale of PPV-501 and Greek BMP-1A1 to Iraq, it would eventually see significant combat surface in the Middle East. One can only wonder if the Iraqi soldiers operating a vehicle appreciated the quality of life improvements of the Ost upgrade, particularly when taking into account the removal of the missile armament in comparison. This concludes our video on the BMP-1 and its services and upgrades in the Federal Republic of Germany. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscription. You can find more information relating to this vehicle in the full article which is linked in the description. If you like what we are doing and want to let us continue working on these videos, please consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be allocated to improving our articles and videos for you. Until next time, keep us in your sights.